Hey there guys, this is Victor with Victor Vector JKU. We're back in the garage and today I'm going to be giving you the long-term review of my Firestone Destination MT2 tires on Project Vector. Let's get into it. I wanted to start off by thanking all my returning subscribers. As always, I appreciate your continued support. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel, like this video, comment, and share it along with any other videos of mine to help my channel grow. So I've been running these tires for nearly three years since July of 2020, and I've logged almost 30,000 miles of combined city, highway, and off-road terrain. Overall, what's my recommendation of these tires? I like the aggressive look, they handle well on-road, and they perform well off-road too. But you'll have to stick around for my full review as we go through this video. So let's go ahead and break this video down into four different categories. We'll start off with a brief recap of why I chose this tire, We'll go on to on-road performance, including tread wear. Then we'll talk about off-road performance, including durability. And we'll finish up with my overall recommendations and suggestions for these tires. So before we get into a recap of why I chose these tires, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link to my previous video that I did my first impressions of these tires, where I go into a lot more detail of why I chose these and detailed specs of these tires. So I purchased five 37 by 1250 radius 17 Firestone Destination MT2s. They are a low rated D tire with three sidewall plies and seven tread plies. These tires started off their life on ProComp steel wheels that were 17 inch diameter by nine inches in width. And later I upgraded to what's currently on my rig, the Dirty Life DT1s or Dual Tech which means that these tires can run both in a traditional fashion, just pneumatically, or they can also run as a beadlock wheel. If you want to know a little bit more about the Dirty Life wheels and why I chose these, I will go ahead and again throw another link up here, or you can check the video description down below for a link to my Dirty Life wheel first impressions. So I originally went with these tires because I wanted to try something different, and I also noticed these being installed from the factory on the 2020 JLU Willys, and that really caught my eye. So I did some research and I found them online for about $315 per tire and I decided to go through Discount Tire because they do price match and they have one of the best tire warranties out there on the market that I've ever found. Now the $315 mark, this came in at that point in time at just about one of the cheapest mud terrain tires that you could find next to the Patagonia MTs, the Firestone Destination MT2s. They are made in North America, specifically Mexico, Canada, and the USA. But my tires specifically were manufactured here in the USA, which is something I'm really proud about. So let's go ahead and get into some of the on-road performance. Initially when I got these tires, I was extremely surprised with how quiet they were and how soft the compound was. Now, of course, these weren't as soft as say a sticky tire or a red label and potentially not even as soft as some of the other more prominent off-road tires out there for mud terrains. But I was still quite surprised. Now over the 30,000 miles that I put on these tires, they have started to get a little bit louder, but they're still not nearly as loud as what you hear going down the highway when you're next to a lifted truck that's running 35s, 37s, and for some reason those tires or those vehicles just always end up having their tires just making a huge amount of noise. And I've been very surprised, very happy with how Minimal that noise has come through with the Firestone Destination MT2s. Now, these tires have seen all the road miles for all the different off-road adventures that I've gone on. I have not yet trailered this vehicle, so that means all of my trips, including two to Southern California, one to Tillamook, Oregon, along with all of the different various trail systems that I've gone to here in the PNW, have all been to and from the trails on these tires, with the caveat of if I had broken down and I needed to be trailered home which has only happened a couple of times. As far as comfort, they are a rigid tire being a load rated D tire, which led me to doing a tread wear pattern test on it with chalk across the width of the tire to determine what the pressure was that I needed to run to get an even tread wear across the entire width of the tire. I ended up finding this was 32 PSI for typical on-road, city, and highway driving. So far, the tread wear has been very even across the entire width of the tire by following a complete five tire rotation pattern where I would rotate in my spare tire to the rear right. My rear right would come up to the front right 
my front right would transfer back to my rear left, and my rear left would go up to the front left, and my front left would then become my new spare tire. In doing this, made sure that my tires were seeing even wear across all four corners of the Jeep, which also enabled that even tread wear. I did this rotation every oil change or approximately every 5,000 miles. Now these tires come with an original tread depth of 21 30 seconds of an inch. And currently where I'm sitting is the center of my tires are at about 13 30 seconds. So I'm a little bit better than 50%. I'm right about 60% of what the original tread depth is. But in review with using my calipers, I've measured across the width and I did notice that the outer lugs are a little bit deeper than the center pattern. For this, it's okay and I understand why, because a lot of the times when I was going on those longer road trips down to Southern California or Tillamook, Oregon, I would run a little bit higher of a pressure to try to maximize fuel economy. So I'd be running about 34 PSI. So it's not unexpected that my center tread was getting a little bit more wear than the outside lugs. But still, I'm very pleased with this wear. As for handling, these tires do very well in dry conditions, but due to a lack of siping and the larger voids that come inherent with a mud terrain tire, reducing the surface area of contact and friction to the road, they are not the best for wet and icy conditions. They still handle well, but there are times when the rear end would break away and I would have to be cautious every now and then. Next, let's talk about off-road performance because let's be honest guys, that's what you're here for. You wanna understand how these tires perform off-road, even though on-road handling can also be an important factor as well. So while I talk through this, I'm going to go ahead and show some shots of my Jeep on the trails to give you some perspective of how these tires perform. The locations that these tires have seen include many trail systems across the PNW, including Reeder, Walker Valley, Tahuya, Elby, Evans Creek, and Manastash, including Funny Rocks and Moon Rocks. They've also been to Tillamook, Oregon, Johnson Valley, and Southern California, as well as the Rubicon near Lake Tahoe in California. From all these locations, these tires have seen just about every type of terrain that the West Coast offers, including wet and dry rock, mud, lake bed sand in Johnson Valley, dirt, gravel, snow, and ice. When aired down appropriately, these tires handle very well in all of these conditions. Typically when I'm off on the trails, and I, since I've started running V-locks, I will run between 8 and 10 PSI for general off-road wet or dry conditions. And then I would run about five to six PSI when I am in snow or ice conditions. Before I had V-locks and I was running my steel wheels, I would still run a fairly low PSI. I'd be running about 12 PSI for most all conditions. And for snow, I would run about 10 PSI. So I was a little bit more conservative when I was running my steel wheels before I got my V-locks. But with that being stated and those pressures I was running, I only ever lost the bead once and that was during a fairly violent obstacle and an area where I had to kind of goose over a rock and the tire came down in a certain direction that just really wanted to force that beat off. I found that tire pressure is a major impact on how these tires performed off-road and that's going to be true for most if not all tires. When the tire pressure is reduced it allows the tire to form over the different obstacles and creates better traction that can grab onto those obstacles and help propel you over them. And even though that these are a load rated D tire and they have a significant number of tread and sidewall plies, they still will conform very well over the rocks. And also even on flat ground, when you're dropped down to about eight PSI, there is a significant bulge that does come out in the sidewall. With that, um, this is my first time doing a long-term tire review and I don't have any other tires that I can compare to that are similar to this. Um, when I first bought my JKU before I upgraded to the 37s, I was running the factory size tires. They were a Goodyear Duratrac. It's a very good tire, but I don't know if it's a fair comparison to try to relate those. And all of my prior wheeling experience was in Jeep Cherokee XJs, and those were only running 31 inch tall tires maximum. And again, that's an area where I don't feel like doing a comparison between those tires and these is gonna be very applicable. So I'm gonna go ahead and omit any, ter any specific terrain ratings or evaluation of my own of these tires. And I'll just give you basically a, a blunt statement that they perform well in all conditions. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about durability. These tires have been proven to be very durable and really only have some minor sidewall scratches that haven't gotten into any of the sidewall bands, as well as there's only a little bit of tire chunking or tread chunking that's happening on the outer lugs. Really, primarily, this happened last year in Tillamook National Forest when we were going through a heavy rock obstacle there. 
And obviously I have been running my tires at a very low pressure, which makes your sidewall a lot more subjected to damage. And I've gone through trails that I've seen other vehicles, other rigs, Jeeps, Toyotas, what have you. And they've gotten sidewall damage where I haven't. Not to say that those tires are less durable than the Firestones, but being a low rated D tire, it does add to more rigidity and more strength in that tire. So I never had any incidents that I ever had to replace a tire due to any sidewall or major tread damage. So my recommendation of the Firestone Destination MT2s is that they are a great tire overall. They have really good tread wear, good tread life, and they are very durable. And I have not had any issues with major damage and they are reasonably comfortable for on-road handling. Currently, I did a little bit of research and I found that these tires in a 37 by 1250 R17 are at a cost of about $460 per tire. Whereas other brands of mud terrain tires in the same size, such as Nitto, BFG, and Mickey Thompson, range from about $480 to $500 per tire. This is not as much of a discrepancy as when I bought these tires back in 2020. However, these tires are made in North America, be it Mexico, Canada, and the USA. Happens to be that my tires specifically were made here in the USA. And that also makes me a little bit more passionate about running these tires specifically. Now, probably the most important question, and I'm sure you've been waiting for me to answer this, is would I buy these tires again? So based on the close proximity of cost to the other more popular brands of tires out there for the off-road community, I would just have to say, I don't think I would. Honestly, for me, an additional $100 to buy a set of five tires with Nitto, BFG, or Mickey Thompson, I think I would rather invest the extra $100 just to get those tires because you've seen them. They're much more proven in the off-road community. You don't see a lot of the Firestone Destination MT2s out there. I think I have maybe seen a handful of people running these, and typically they're on the stock JLU Willys packages, not typically an aftermarket size 35 or 37 even. Now, if Firestone were to come in and say $50 per tire cheaper than these other brands, I think that would probably be enough to sway me. 250 bucks is a lot for five tires. Uh, that would uh, probably be the reason why I would maybe stick to getting these again. Okay guys, so that's gonna wrap up this long-term review of the Firestone Destination MT2s. I hope that you found this video informative and that you took some value away from it. If you did, please like this video, throw any comments down below, and share this video with any of your friends and on any social media platforms that you guys use to help my channel grow. With that, we are Victor Vector JK. You were taking on this build and the trails, both direction and magnitude. All right, guys, have a good one. We'll catch you next time.